A report by McKinsey estimated that about 40% of American current jobs would disappear by 2030. New jobs will be created, some of them are yet beyond our imagination. Chances are we'll have to go through major career changes in our 40s, 50s, or 60s. Chances are you're already going through a major career change right now, transitioning into data science and tech-related fields. Most of the things I learned in data science in the past five years is through self-studying. In today's video, I'm going to focus on two important key points for teaching yourself anything as a self-taught person in data science, your belief system and learning system. So in the first part, we'll be talking about setting the right mindset for learning. And in the second part, I'll be talking about a hands-on five-step learning framework that I'll apply to learning almost anything in data science, tech, or even learning a new hobby. If you come from a non-tech background learning data science, you might be thinking at some point, oh, I'm not good enough at math, I suck at coding, or I'm not an analytical person, I don't have enough time to learn, and so on. As a kid, I used to be told I was not very smart. I always got compared with a guy in my primary school who was absolutely a genius in math. So my teachers told my parents something along the line of, Tu has very good grade, she's not the most brilliant student in the class, but she works very hard to make up for that. So throughout my school, I always felt like I was never smart enough, I was never truly legit, so I went on to carry that limit belief into my adulthood and that's part of the reason why back then I chose to study economics in undergraduate school which is a little bit lighter in math content instead of math physics or computer science even though they were my most favorite subjects at school only to find myself 10 years later circling back to take a second undergraduate study in computer science if you're still a student or you're looking for a data science job you might feel this imposter feeling very strongly comparing yourself with everyone else in the world and thinking, who am I to even apply for this job? But why set yourself limits? Because you can really learn anything. The older I get, well, just for the record, I'm turning 30 next month. The deeper I understand the quote from Steve Jobs that I heard maybe 15 years ago in secondary school, everything around you that you call life was made up by people who were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you can build your own things that other people can use. Once you learn that, you never be the same again. I think to be able to learn things fast, whether it is learning a new programming language or to learn some hard machine learning topics, you need to adopt this mindset of everything is learnable, everything is figureoutable, and you can master this thing. This self-confidence is perhaps what makes some people absorb knowledge and learn new skills easier and faster than others. A sad story for myself is that I was always intimidated by time series models. Somehow, I always thought my brain was not good at this, and I couldn't wrap my head around those models, so I kind of set myself for failure to learn at the start, and in one of the interviews for a cool data science job in Amsterdam, I got asked about explaining some time series models and as you can already guess, I failed the interview. A higher level than mindset and beliefs is identity. I can imagine that a career transition of some sort to data science or tech could require an identity shift as well. At least this is what it felt to me. Coming from economics to data science and tech, a lot of my friends who want to switch to data science but still keep this belief of being a non-tech person and can't learn math and techy stuff, you really have to ditch the identity and just dive right in. And that will make learning new things in data science much easier and more comfortable because you no longer have to fight back the old identity that's no longer serving. I think of it as sort of a mind-body alignment. It's easier to do what you really think than the other way around. So to sum up, whatever mindset or even identity you adopt when it comes to learning, that's a choice that you have complete control over. So we might better choose the one that actually helps. Now, let's move on to the learning system. You probably agree with me that information is quite cheap nowadays. Data science content is everywhere. In fact, it's a bit too much. The fact that you're watching really high quality videos absolutely for free on YouTube proves that the problem is not the lack of information, but the main challenge is our ability to process the information. So let's talk about the five-step learning framework. Before learning anything, take a moment to ask yourself why you should learn it. Suppose you want to 
learn deep learning because some friends told you, oh, deep learning is hot right now. And you said, sure, let me just go and take some deep learning courses. And two weeks later, things get a bit more difficult and you start wondering why you even started all this. From my own experience, this is how a lot of self-study plans fail. You start learning something without asking yourself why you really need to learn it. Why is it important? At school, you already have your why set by your teachers that you need to learn this if you want to pass the course and graduate. But with self-studying, without a clear motivation, it's very hard to keep up. If you want to be really serious about this, I encourage you to write down the reasons why you want to learn the thing you want to learn. So every time you're a bit stuck or feeling a bit low or in doubt, you can look back at those notes. The next step is to find the right material for your study. I usually like the combination of video courses, books, and online resources like loose articles or websites. You can organize them in a Notion page. I think usually videos are good for giving a visual summary of the material. There are of course many platforms you can go to for video courses. I like Coursera and you can find many good quality courses in data science from top universities and professors. You can find some courses and specializations I highly recommend in the description down below. Another favorite platform I use for learning new creative hobbies and personal development topics is Skillshare, who has kindly sponsored this video. Many of you asked me how I learned video editing and filming, I actually learned most of that on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on videography, illustration, graphic design, entrepreneurship, and even data science. A year ago, I bought this first ever camera for this YouTube channel while having absolutely zero knowledge in how to make videos. So I went on Skillshare and took some basic video editing classes and later some advanced video editing techniques and illustration on iPad, which you might have seen me doing a few times in some of my videos. With all of the class, you can just go on your own pace, jump around lessons, and see what's interesting for you. It's nice to learn here because compared to YouTube, it's a completely ad-free environment. New classes are launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. In the description below, you can check out the link for your one-month free trial on Skillshare. Video courses are good, but if I want to dig deeper into some topics, I would still like to refer to books. For data science books, I usually make sure I have two types of books. One type is technical or hard science books like this hands-on machine learning book or visualize this or data visualization with JavaScript. I bought this for some reason. The other type of books is the easy science type. For example, I have a book here about master algorithm. Um, if you want to learn more about machine learning application, I have cryptography if you want to learn more about cryptography, but in plain English. So these books is a great way to reinforce your understanding of the technical things you learned. And if you have to explain to someone else that technical thing, you have a very good reference and also the use cases that you can draw from. Finally, Online courses like Kaggle, niche websites on the topics, and websites of experts are also my to-go resources for seeing what's possible, what people are doing, or talking about some particular topic. Okay, after you found the material, the next thing to do is to absorb the information. Here's the weird thing that I usually do. I usually like to immerse myself in the thing, visualize I can walk into the thing, examine the ins and outs of it. I think in data science, behind every number and formula you see is always a story. You can even come up with your own stories for them. For example, when you're learning about a confusion matrix, you can tell the story of you jumping around the matrix, telling the story of your COVID test, for example. In this cell, you have no COVID and you got negative test. And in the other one, you have COVID but got negative results. So you ended up infecting everyone at the party you went to last weekend. Uh, it's not fun. And so on. In my Math for Data Science video, I also talked about this tip together with other tips for absorbing information in a fun and effective way. Another way to digest the knowledge is to learn with others. Have you studied in a group before and your friend asked some question about the material and you thought, oh, that's a very good question. I never thought about it. As you try to explain your understanding, it's very good for reinforcing what you learn. At school, you might have quizzes and exams to test your understanding. But with self-studying, 
being you kind of have to engineer this for yourself if you don't have friends who can join you for learning data science you can join my discord server down below where we have nearly 300 members sharing data science learning materials tips and tricks and doing projects together the third step in your learning process is to retain and documenting the other day i talked to a friend who was looking for a new data science job and he was feeling a bit low i asked him why and he said well he's learned a lot but he always feels like he hasn't learned anything. And whenever he applies for a job, he feels like he has nothing to show. He feels really imposter because he really cannot remember what he has learned. So I recommended him to start documenting what he has learned, whether it is to take handwritten notes or digital notes or some kind of system that helps him get an overview and a record of what he has learned. So retaining and documenting information can help you feel like, yeah, you have done it, you have learned it, and you can always go back to revise what you have learned later on. As soon as you finish absorbing and documenting what you learned, we go straight to the application part. Don't wait too long because you'll forget them very quickly. The way you apply what you learned can be as small as creating small notebook and try out all possible things you can do, for example, with pandas, data frame, or applying a new machine learning model on a simple Kaggle dataset. Always ask yourself, how I can play with this? How I can make it better? This is called deliberate practice, and deliberate practice makes perfect. If you're more ambitious, you can create a portfolio project, for example, if you are learning about API and network analysis, why not start using both of them for a data science project? On my channel, you can find a few portfolio project videos on this, so feel free to check them out. You definitely need to put in the work and it's hard sometimes, but Google, Stack Overflow, and YouTube are your best friends. Some project videos you see on my channel took me like 30 hours to complete. You can either think of it as 30 hours of suffering, or you can think of it as 30 hours of deliberate learning and practice. I prefer to think the latter. It's okay to get help from someone else. It's okay to not finish it 100%. It's okay to even start over if it doesn't go anywhere. Because yeah, who cares? The last step is to show your work on Medium, YouTube, Twitter, or LinkedIn, depending on what you are familiar with. I really believe in learning by sharing and teaching others. On the Tuvo Data Analytics Discord server, many of the members shared projects they are working on, Gaggle notebooks they have created, blog posts they wrote. It's super, super inspiring for me to see this. Another benefit of showing your work and teaching others is that even if you don't have a formal education background in data science or computer science, it's a great way to become an expert in this field. Having working experience might help, but no one really gets to know what skills you really have or what knowledge you actually have, except for your direct co-workers at your work. So to really show your expertise and knowledge, you really need to show it online. Despite those benefits of showing your work, some of you might look at the great work from other people and think, my projects are too simple, too raw, they are not good enough. This is called upward counterfactual thinking. Just like in Olympic games, studies have consistently found that athletes who won bronze medal are usually happier than those who won silver medals. This is because silver medalists often compare themselves with gold medalists, while bronze medalists think, I'm so happy that I even won a medal at all. So we can learn from this story to be more objective and make sure you look both upward and downward and acknowledge how far you've come in your data science journey. Needless to say learning takes energy and focus. As I get older, I realize my energy level has more ups and downs, so is my focus. Competing priorities of work, hobbies, and YouTube channel, while I also need to take care of myself and my personal life, I find myself more often with some level of anxiety and depleting energy, even before starting my day. I used to take energy and focus for granted, but now I've really had to learn to engineer my own energy and focus. For me, the importance skill is not time management anymore. It's energy management. So I've learned a few things about myself that usually help managing my energy level and optimize it for learning. Before I study, I make sure I have cleaned up my learning environment. If I'm at home, I'll make sure to clean up my room and desk. Otherwise, I'd lose my energy feeling annoyed and anxious with the mess around me. I'll put my phone away or behind my laptop, out of sight, out of mind, and I'll put on some lo-fi or soft 
of piano music with a cup of tea to study. Focused energy is everything if you want to study effectively and to create good work, so don't waste it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!